Hey guys, I am so excited today to introduce you to the first person that I interviewed for this Women Concert Photographers series. Now, I am so, so excited to show you all the filming and everything that I did with Silver, but first I wanted to give a little bit of an introduction for Silver herself and why I started with interviewing her. Silver and I actually met at LA Fashion Week a few seasons ago, and I was introduced to her as, here's another female concert photographer, you guys would get along. And it was such a cool way to meet someone outside of the concert photography industry and just get to know her and her style outside of the competition of being in the pit together. Since then, I kind of kept in touch with her and she was one of the first people that I thought of when I thought of starting this interview series simply because I felt absolutely no competition, no negativity towards her the whole time that I was talking to her. Every time I talked to her, it was always like supportive and just really excited for each other. So I really wanted to start off this interview series with someone that was easy to talk to, fun to talk to, but also just a great photographer that also has great insights about the industry. So before I say anything else, I'm just gonna kick us right into this interview. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks guys. So we're here with Silver. Silver, thank you so much for sitting down and doing this interview with me. I'm so excited to have you. I guess we'll just jump right in and get started. The first thing that I wanted to talk about that I know I've told you numerous times is that I love your style. Your style for concert photography to me is so unique. You're like you. really on brand like all the time for you. It seems like whenever I see your Instagrams, I just know, you know, pictures from you whenever I see That's it. That's so funny. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. I definitely try to yeah. maintain, which is hard and it's like I feel like you have to nowadays. You have to mm -hmm. stay consistent or have like a theme or like a style, so um it's good to know <laughs> that I'm like succeeding in that. Yeah, it's something that like I struggle with and I know a lot of other photographers yeah. struggle with. So like how did you dive into your style and can you like describe it a little bit? I'll show a few photos of yours, but yeah. like if you could describe it. I do like a very neutral look and things that like are a little bit more muted. I feel like a lot of times when I see especially like concert photography, <laughs> a lot of um repetitive styles like really high contrast or yeah. people will like blast the clarity so like every like feature on a person's face is like crispy and sharp and like I think um I I don't know I just like shy away from that and like yeah. I always like bring the color down a little bit so I like to make things look a little bit softer even like reminiscent of like a film look or like a Polaroid I just like that like cooler like softer tone maybe where it's like just less of like a punch or less of a contrast. Photos already have so much going on usually or yeah. there's just like there's so much there already that like I like to just kind of cool it down. Okay so let's talk a little bit about how you got started in photography in general and how you got started in concerts. Okay so as far as photography like I, like I mentioned my dad um, was a photographer when I was younger so I was always around cameras okay. when I was with cool. my dad and just kind of seeing his stuff around this is actually my mom when she was like oh, probably that's awesome. nine and that's the photo that my dad took so these are just films oh, that's that cool. my dad took these on film like forever ago so my dad was a photographer so I, I was kind of around it a little bit and um I don't know what really got me really into it. I, I think like I was just always into taking pictures everywhere I went and I had like a little digital camera and I would take pictures and um, I would make like, I made a calendar for like my grandpa of just like all these photos that I took and like, um, or going to camp with like your disposable camera yeah. and I would just take, I think I would like, like my mom would buy them so I could take pictures of my friends and I like yeah. only took pictures of the trees <laughs> and she was like looking through them like, 
what a waste. <laughs> but like, so I think I just like I just was kind of always intrigued mm. by photography in general. Um, and as far as shows, I started going to shows when I was like 17, 18, okay. kind of like towards the end of high school because I was doing homeschooling. Oh. And so I was doing homeschooling and I was working a lot. So I had like money and free time <laughs> and I uh, like was listening to a lot of music and I had never been to a concert before that and I remember like a lot of my friends would be like oh I saw like the Jonas Brothers when I was a kid and I was like I have never been to a concert and it was like towards the end of high school so I was like I'm gonna see a live show and I started going to shows like as much as I possibly That's could awesome. and I just like totally fell in love with live music and just like yeah. the feeling you get when you see your favorite artist in their like and I was always front row. Like I did not play. Like, <laughs> like, I was like pushed your way I'm through in the front row. So like to be like this close to yeah. someone that you have been listening to in your ears in your room and then they're like right there. So it's like yeah. just this amazing feeling and you're just so happy and I remember being like, I wanna feel like this all the time. <laughs> like how can I do this? And I had met someone at a show, it was Ellie Golding at the Fox Pomona, like 2013 or something, like forever ago. And um, he was a he shot shows and he had shot churches the night before. And mm -hmm. I was like so awesome. mind blown. He's like in line editing. His name's Russ. He's like one of my good friends now. And I was like, whoa! <laughs> like I was like, it all clicked. I was like, I need to do that. And then yeah. like, um, I had just kind of like asked him, I was just like picking his brain and he was like, yeah, you shoot for like little, you know, music blogs or these small magazines or whatever. And um, I had gotten in touch with Amadeus magazine through a person that I was dating at the time. And uh, I just asked like, can I shoot a show for you? And I had never shot a show before. So I was like, please let me in. And like, I have, no, like, I have nothing to show for it. But um, I shot like Unknown Mortal Orchestra at the Fonda. That was like my first show, which is kind of crazy looking back. I'm like, that's a pretty good venue. Um, and then I just went from there and then I just awesome. kept going. So yeah. It's also nice when you have someone to talk to, even if you like meet yeah. them at a concert and be like, how should I do this? How should I oh, start always. out? Yeah, and I'm like never ever afraid to do that. I think I, I would do that to everyone I met. And even now, just like with everything I want to do, I'm like, who's in a position that I want to be in? Cool. Like, no how did you time. get there? Like, what did it take? How long did it take you? Not that like everyone's journey is going to be the same, but like, I'm never shy about that because like I want to succeed. So everywhere yeah. I go, I'm like, Tell me, tell me what you did. I'm really shy when it comes to meeting new people for the most part, but I did the same thing that like, I would see someone in the position that I wanted to be in and I'm like, I'm gonna force myself to talk yeah, to them. I was like, I gotta to. do this and- um, Cause they've done it. So it's like, show me how. <laughs> yeah, and like even talking to like venues, I noticed that like bartenders at small clubs like actually had good insight on how to shoot shows at their venues really and like I that's how i that. started in new york was just like talking to people that worked at that's the venue genius. and it's just like people will help people you just have to kind of put yourself out there and yeah. ask and oh. it's like almost all the time it's a situation like what you were in, you're talking to someone and then they're like, yeah, let me help you out. Let me share my knowledge. And it's so easy, but it's just like, you yeah. put yourself out there. <laughs> yeah, and I think people for the most part are like always willing to just, I mean, hopefully yeah. if you're like a nice or decent person. But um, yeah, I think people are always willing to just like help. They'll respect that you are like making the effort to be like, hey, I want this work for me. And then they'll exactly. definitely be like, I mean, I, I definitely would respect that, so. For your photography, do you just stick to concerts or do you do other types of like photography, weddings or anything else? I do not do weddings. Um, I don't want to, I don't think I ever want to do a wedding. Um, I just feel like that's so much pressure. <laughs> and like with my luck, like I always, something always goes wrong if it's like important. Oh like, yeah. My like just just like yesterday, I was trying to get these photos to someone, and it was like the Dropbox just froze midway, and it was like two hours remaining, and I'm like watching it, and and it's like, and I, I like try to do it again, like I just always have issues, so like I don't mess with very important things, but um, 
I do, um, I want to get into more like editorial, more fashion, um, more lifestyle, and like still pertaining to musicians. Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff that I've done, actually most of the stuff that I've, that I've done just like content creation wise mm -hmm. has just been like, come to the studio and like maybe in between like sessions, like let's walk around LA and yeah. uh, take photos or just yeah. a lot of like behind the scenes stuff That's that kind of just like, it's interesting how like quick you can create something really cool. Like there are a couple photos that I've just done where it's like, hey, like just like stand right here in the parking lot and let's take some and it's like, it ends up like stuff turns out so good. Like, yeah. so I, I definitely want to get more into like the lifestyle or just, um, more even more fashion forward it, it is fun when there's like more posing or there's a concept and um someone has really cool makeup or a really cool outfit like i really love yeah. stuff like that so i definitely want to get into that more in the future i feel like it's harder when you're focused on like concerts and these like um like kind of more lifestyle stuff that it's things as they're happening and you move over to something that's posed yeah. I struggle so hard with that and I see a lot of people like transition over do bulb it's and I'm just like I don't know how to pose people yeah it's difficult I find myself like rapid firing a oh. lot because it's like oh, that's what I'm used to it's like, like you're like I gotta capture all the moments and they're like not moving and I'm like I have like five frames of the same thing like um but it, but I mean, it is fun. Like I think it's just all like playing and yeah. like just I mean, getting people together that and having it be kind of casual and fun and um, yeah, I think is a good way to transition. Cause I don't know the tech. I know that there are things that like look good or certain like angles. I'm sure like ways to extend your neck or your body that like would be good. Like, but I don't know them. So I mean, it's all gonna be a learning experience yeah. figuring all that out. But whatever, it's all. Fun. So diving into like, um, I guess photography specific kind of stuff, are you a Nikon or a Canon person? So I'm a Canon girl now. Um, I was Nikon and I was Canon before that, um, but I've, I've gone back to Canon. Um, I don't know, I've just, I've, there's something about Canon that I've always just felt really comfortable with mm -hmm. it. Um, I did shoot Nikon a little bit in the past because my dad shot Nikon, so we had all the lenses. Oh, so that I makes was it like, easy. I'm ditching Canon for Nikon, <laughs> and I like sold everything I had, and I went to Nikon, and then I don't know after like a couple of years, I was like, I kind of like missed the Canon look. Yeah. And, like there's, I mean, because they are different. Um, I don't know if you if you've shot both. I haven't, but I've heard that like um, the skin tones. For Canon is a huge thing. It's a huge thing. It's so different, and, it, and it's definitely your lens as well. But oh, that was yeah. there's something about, and this was back. I'm sure like things are different now. But like when I was shooting Nikon, there was something with the skin tone that I was like, there's just something different, or like s some of the colors that like I don't know. So I went to Canon, and I just never looked back. <laughs> so I've been with Canon for quite a while now. Yeah, I've noticed that sometimes with the color like edits at the end, I ask someone what they shoot on, and most of the time when it's appealing to me, it's Canon, yeah, it's and it makes weird. me like so upset because I love my Nikon, I love how it handles and low lighting, but at the same time there is like that something else of the other there company is. that just like draws you in, and it's like, oh, is it worth it? Because you have to sell literally everything or just everything. start from scratch. They're super, yeah, because I think everything about them is opposite, even the way that you turn when you zoom, it's like, it's yeah. opposite, or even like putting the lens on the body, everything's different, but um, there are things that I've noticed about Nikon too that I like more than Canon, and I'm like, you just can't have it both ways. <laughs> like, just, yeah. You I'm should just have two sets of gear. Just I know, I want know. like, the, you've seen people with like the belt, and they have yeah. like gear on them, like I just need like one Nikon, like one Nikon. <laughs> And you're at concerts, like, do I want better skin tones right now, or, or do I want light. this low light? It's just, just have it. <laughs> yeah, just have it. I don't know of anyone that has both. I've actually never heard of that. That I haven't either. Uses both. Maybe you can start a trend. Yeah, maybe <laughs> I should jump on that train and start something. Maybe Get a sponsorship so from both a Nikon. Dual, a dual citizenship. <laughs> With the, what's your favorite lens that you shoot on? I stick to my 24-70 to f2.8 um it's a sigma 
It is so old. I don't even know what like year it was made because oh. I bought it off Craigslist. <laughs> but I bought it off Craigslist like three years ago. Okay. And it was old before then. <laughs> so it stuck with me. It's it's kind of like I have it right up there. It's like kind of dying. Like it's really loud. So it's like oh, <laughs> yeah. Like when it starts to auto focus. So it's kind of annoying, which is another reason why I don't shoot weddings because it's like. <laughs> The sound is just awful, but uh, I lo I love it. Like I yeah. shoot everything on it. I've everything that I've ever shot has been on that lens, and um, I don't plan on like ever changing. I mean, I might yeah. upgrade, but I would st stick to the twenty four to seventy. I just love it. And then yeah, when your I camera's full too. frame, it just makes it even better. So. It's so beautiful. That angle, it's, it's really just so like appealing. It. Yeah, I like it. That's that's my little. I stick to that one. What was your favorite concert that you ever photographed? Oh man, <laughs> my favorite show, I would say Fantagram at the Palladium. Oh. Wait, this was like a, a little while ago, but I had never seen them live ever and I've been listening to them for so long and I just wanted to see them so bad, I wanted to go to their show and my person that I shoot with was like, can you shoot the range? He was opening and I was mm -hmm. like, oh man, like, I didn't know who was opening Fantagram. I was like, oh, like, yeah, maybe, but like, I really want to see Fantagram that night. And then she like texted me an hour later and was like, wait, like, he's opening for them. And I was like, <laughs> I'm going. And, like, I remember just like, because the Palladium's huge and I've never yeah. shot there before. So this, the area between stage and like the barricade is, it's massive. It's like a huge pool. And I just remember like being escorted and their visuals were insane. It was just crazy, like listening to them for like so yeah. long and loving them and then like the curtain drops and I'm like <laughs> right in front. and I was like I like I was like I looked crazy because I was just like smiling and I was so excited and just like being that close. I love seeing people with that expression in the pit. That like I gives <laughs> me chills because like I've I'm been that so way excited. and I like it shows that like you love your job and that you love doing what you're doing and like we see we'll probably dive into this in a bit but like we see like cranky people and like crabby people and stuff yeah. in the pit all the time. So to like look over and just see someone like awestruck, oh, like, like enjoying yeah. their like life and enjoying the moment, that's like the best thing for me. Even if I'm not like a fan of music, right. I enjoy seeing that. Yeah, so that's so cool that you had that opportunity. Yeah, and I almost like wanted to put my camera away because I was just like, I just want to like live because they kick you out for three months. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, should, should I just like stop and like enjoy it? But it was like. I, I just, I'll never like forget that. And I ended up, I shot video mostly because I was there to shoot the opener. Like I wasn't there to okay. shoot Fantagram. So I shot a lot, I got a lot of good shots of the opener and then I just did video of Fantagram. That's awesome. And um, that was like the first edit that I did, like a video for a show that I was like, oh, this is like really fun. I want to do more video. But um, yeah, that was like the, the best for sure. Because Palladium awesome. is huge. So it's like, it was just nuts. Who is on your bucket list for that you still want to photograph? Okay, St. Vincent, number one. She's like a, incredible. Her, like, I think as just a creative person, yeah. I think she's amazing. Um, I really want to shoot the 1975. They released yeah. a, a new song and I'm like, God, this is so good. I've just, I've been listening to them for so long and yeah. just have a lot of respect for, um, for them as like musicians and creatives as well. Um, Tovlo, mm, yeah. I got really into her recently and I'm just like, this is such good pop music, <laughs> like I just love it. Um, Lord is probably like my big one. And I thought you shot Lord before. I did, I shot her like, sn like very sneaky, like I wasn't supposed to have my camera <laughs> in the venue. This was back at the Fonda when she, this is like two days before she released Pure Heroin and okay. I like, shoved my camera in the bottom of my backpack and I was like, I'm shooting this show yeah i just i got some really good photos of her but i would love to have like an actual session with her like backstage uh, yeah, totally. and just and like hang out with her because yeah, she's like awesome. a year younger than me but her birthday is the day before mine so she's a scorpio i feel like we get along she's my number one i think that i'd want to like like hang, hang with and like actually like, take cool like posed photos with yeah um, for sure um I love this artist named Elo Elohim. 
She's like an electronic, more DJ, like producer. Um, I think she's really cool. I think her visuals are great. Her message that she puts out. Um, she's someone that I really, really respect. Uh, Maggie Rogers, mm -hmm. really good. I don't know. I mean, there's so many. Those are my top, probably in Banks. I love her. Yeah. A lot of really awesome female artists on yeah. that list. And Paramore, they're like the loves of my life. Yeah. They always will be. But it's one of those things where it's like they're so on a level that I'm like, I don't know what I'll <laughs> to that point, but like they're my favorite for sure. Do you have any like general photography concert tips or tips for aspiring female concert photographers? Um, yeah, especially for the ladies. Don't let anybody like push you around or like get in front of you or be like, hey, like I need to be here. Like yeah. I'm more important. People have literally said that to me, like word for word. Like, hey, sweetie, like I'm actually shooting for the event. Like you need to move. Um, and at the time, I was like, oh, okay, like yeah, you know. So it's like, I would just say, like don't let anyone like make you feel like less then like for whatever reason whether yeah. it's like the gear you have like they don't think that it's like good enough because that's a, that's the a thing like people will think that because like your stuff isn't like the latest and greatest that is like oh amateur like yeah. it's crazy um so just say like i mean that definitely like, don't let anyone like get in your way and just like get in there and like do your thing like you're mm -hmm. everyone's there for the same reason so like just um kind of like fight for it <laughs> because you have to sometimes um and then also just like don't be hard on yourself because it is it can be super hard. It gets so dark. Yeah. At shows and like you can't always bring a speed light. Like I <laughs> pretty much never do. Um, but yeah, just like take the time to learn and like just practice. That's the biggest yeah. thing that you can do and, and know what you're doing. I think a lot of people nowadays like don't know what they're doing as far as photographers because I feel like. Everyone's a photographer, you yeah. know, like with social media, but people just like put it on auto and they don't really know what they're doing. So I think just take the time to actually know like what your camera is and how it works and how to take yeah. a good picture and, and and then just practice. Yeah. Also, you mentioned auto. I see people using auto all the time at concerts how? and it makes me laugh so hard because I'm like, I just want to like teach you because your camera is going to do one of two things. It's going to bump up the ISO so and you're going to have something rainy. <laughs> or the other thing is that you're going to have the slowest shutter speed <laughs> in the world. That like you're going to have a second. You're going to have this like artistic, beautiful blur of what's going on on stage. I don't stage. know how, like, I've, I see it too and I'm just kind of like, and they like don't even look. I'm like, why are you looking? Like, just like look at what you're producing because I know it's not good. But um, I've like I've talked to numerous photographers like of all different levels that are like, oh, what are you shooting at? Like, what are your settings? So I feel like I'm kind of getting sidetracked. But no, tip please. for anyone else, if you're like uncomfortable with your settings and you want to use auto, just ask anyone else in the pit. Yeah. Because you I've had <laughs> I've had guys and girls ask me kind of like sarcastically, like, oh, what are you shooting at? Because they don't think I know what I'm talking about yeah, or something. Totally. But then I've also just like had full on conversations where people are just like, oh, like you're shooting with this, that's interesting, what are you shooting at? So it's like, you can really ask anyone, and it goes yeah. back to like, people will help you if you put, you know, your, yeah, yourself like out check. there. Yeah. That's how you learn, and yeah. then, like, you can tell someone else when they don't know what they're <laughs> doing. <It's> like, <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, I, I don't know, I think that the photography community, I mean, I like to believe it's very, like, friendly and kind of just like, everyone's there doing the same yeah. thing. It can be very competitive, though. I don't know, yeah, definitely always ask, I <laughs> don't know. <laughs> Something that you mentioned to me previously that we didn't talk about yet that I thought was so interesting is you said that you shot like both Nikon and Canon before, but that you cover up like brands oh, and stuff. Oh yeah, <laughs> Can I you do. like tell me why I'm okay. like go into that because I thought that was so interesting. Yeah, so I put black tape <laughs> on every like word on my cameras yeah. or like my flashes just because I feel like it's none of your business <laughs> like what I'm working with yeah um, but I just I also feel like as a young female you're kind of 
already, for me, and I've personally experienced it, where like people just don't take you seriously anyway, and um, like I'm sure you've seen it, where like you go to shows and these guys have like a vest and like yeah. a pole and like three cameras, three and just like like changing like in the middle of the show, and you're just like, I mean, I like please, like that's amazing, you yeah. know, if that's what you want to do, but like. I feel like, and they're like, oh, like, what, are, like, what are you shooting on? And, I'm, and I just like hate that. Like, I, yeah. mean, I, I, I get it. Like, I kind of ask out of my own curiosity to kind of like know what else is out there. Like, I know Fuji is like on the rise. Oh, Everyone yeah, is, totally. is switching to Fuji, so I'm always curious. Or Sony, curious about stuff like that. But it's kind of like, I don't know. There's just there, you can tell when it's different when it's very like oh. competitive. Like, oh, totally. so like. Oh yeah, it's like what what year is that? And I'm like, it literally doesn't matter. <laughs> like, you know what yeah. I mean? So I just started like blacking everything out because it's like, I don't need anyone like looking at my stuff and like judging it or being like, oh that person's an amateur because like my stuff is so old. <laughs> like, then it's kind of and I also like the way it looks. I just yeah. like keeping it like mysterious. But um, <laughs> it was mostly for the thing where I just don't need any like anyone looking at it like oh yeah you know because I used to shoot on like not to like bash anything but I always shot on like, this little rebel camera that was like tiny with like oh, a little yeah. like with a lens that's like I think it goes like 55 like it's and I just I, I remember even feeling like oh this is like such like a, a beginner's camera and even feeling kind of insecure about that mm -hmm. and the way people would be like oh like you're shooting rebel like nice and I'm like <laughs> like it just kind of it's weird so I just I just blacked it out and, yeah People still ask. <laughs> They're like, "So what kind of camera is that?" And I just like, but I yeah, I just started blacking out because of the, the judgment. Yeah, it's so weird that that's a part of the community that there is so much like judgment there for just like what kind of gear you have, and it's pretty much yeah. like how much money do you spend on exactly. this? Exactly. It's not about like your final images or anything. No one's like really flipping oh, out yeah. their phone showing like, "Oh, I shot this." It's like. I spent three thousand dollars on this lens. How much do you spend on yours? I was like, dude, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it, that's it's such a thing. It's I don't understand it. Let's dive on in about talking about the concert photography industry um, because this is one thing that I originally started talking to you about and just right. like wanting to know your pet peeves in the industry, things that you love, just like things that are top of mind when you're like out shooting shows and like when people ask you about like what you do and all of yeah. that. Yeah. Well my favorite thing is like getting it in like for free. <laughs> um, yeah, that's awesome. If you can and then um, I mean that's always fun and I think just the experience of, of being that close. Like you're closer than anyone else and um, just being like right underneath someone and um, there's that excitement when the first when the person first walks out and um, just I mean everybody's excitement and like my excitement also <laughs> and, like just being so close and I think also being able to clearly see the artist and the oh, artist expressions yeah. which is so special I think that's probably one of my favorite things is just seeing seeing them and like their reaction to, to everybody and everyone else's energy and, and, and getting it that close and getting to like capture that is also really, it's just, it's special. I think that's the only way that you can really put it. Yeah. Um, so that's probably one of my favorite things is just, just the experience as a whole. And then yeah. um, also it's like the best thing when they like repost the photo that you took. That's probably like the coolest part where it's like at the end of everything, like when they post like your photo out of everyone else's, it's kind of like, it's just really cool. Yeah, it is. Do you have any pet peeves about the industry? Things that you could change if you could? I guess... I mean, I would love more, like, freedom in this sense, but I guess that would be more of, like, an artist photographer like relationship like there are times when I shoot a show and I'm like oh if I could put like two speed lights back here like behind oh totally and then like if I just, I wish I mean I wish I could just have more of that creative freedom but I don't know I guess I would I mean just the competition aspect of it I think in that but that that'll always be there with anything I think there's there's always gonna be like a hierarchy though of like who's more important and who should be exactly 
everywhere. But I just, I know that when I shoot shows, like, I'm always, like, letting people go in front of me, or I'm always, like, making sure I'm not blocking anyone. So I think if, if people could just always be... Be like more considerate. Player, yeah. I think that would be ideal. Yeah. If I could change something, yeah. Yeah. I know this is something that we've kind of talked a little bit more off camera, I think, that that there is like a lot of competition. And I think this was the first thing that I said when I presented this whole interview series, is right. that there's so many women in the industry or just people in the industry in general, but there's this weird competition there that like right. me and you shouldn't be competitors because we have totally different styles, we right. shoot different types of music, and it's just like that competition shouldn't be there. But in the industry, it's almost like it's there for everyone, and it doesn't really yeah. make a lot of sense. Yeah, I think in the industry as a whole, just like concert photography aside, but just like photography in general, I'm I'm learning and I'm seeing like so much of like the competition side is is your social media presence and like who uh, you've shot and like yeah. how many followers you have, and that's something that I would like want to just like completely dismantle like I hate that I think it's like I just hate it like having building a social media following is like literally a job like yeah you have to work on it every single day and I've gone through periods where I'm like I need to do this I need it. it's so important but at the end of the day I'm like I don't want to post a picture every day yeah. like I don't have anything to say and I don't want to be like obsessively doing that but I've also like tried to go out for jobs or get more work or even have people interested in working with me after seeing my website and my portfolio and seeing all of my work and then being like, oh yeah, like looks great, but like, like what's your Instagram? And then I'm like, I don't want to see my Instagram because like you just saw all my work and you loved it. Yeah. And then I give them my like social media, which has like less than a thousand followers because I don't really, I mean, yeah. I just use it kind of for me. And then like you never hear back and it's kind of like people don't want to work with you if you don't have that. And it, it goes into a whole like... I could just open up a black hole of like this industry of like not getting paid actual money like this pattern that I've noticed and even just for for years actually is this whole like getting paid with exposure thing and I think that that's like what makes it so hard to be a freelancer in general and especially as a photographer because I've gone on like Craigslist to, to just look for like work like where can I get like a quick like hundred dollar gig if, I mean which is yeah. like so not like a realistic great for anyone but just yeah I don't know if you've ever been in a buy and like I just don't want to hear right now so it's like I'll go and look for anything and and literally people are like models looking for photographers like trade for um trade for print or trade for uh, publicity or trade for promo yeah. and it's like I get it like you need to build your portfolio but mm -hmm. also like time no one's time is like for worth the value of like money anymore everything is all about um you're following and it's weird because it's like like how is how does anyone make the money yeah and if it's like well like yeah you do this and then it builds your following and then you get paid work but it's like when you know like when do you get paid and how much and is it even livable like it's yeah. really not and I think that that's kind of where the world is headed in general like yeah. for everyone for makeup artists for stylists for models even for photographers it's kind of like no one wants to pay money and I think that's where it gets hard just kind of doing working with like smaller people or, or people who are more independent yeah. whereas like when I work with a label and that's where like they have more money like that's where I know that my money can come from because it's yeah. people that like actually have money yeah. whereas like to collaborate it can be hard because everyone's in it for like the numbers and it's kind of sad yeah honestly there's a lot of people especially I feel like this is very common in LA not to hate on LA I love living no, I here have an issue. <laughs> yeah. but with you know everyone out here trying to do some sort of acting modeling artists anything creative yes really they they will want to continually have content to put out totally get it we're obviously yeah. trying to do the same thing it's important to be like continuously working on something but at the same time like I've worked with big stars that have like reposted my stuff and it's like that'll get me like three followers 
So I'm like, why would I do something for free for someone who has like 20,000 followers and right. isn't famous yet? And then they're like, well, it'll give you good exposure. And I feel like I need to put a chart together of the exposure that I've gotten oh, yeah. from all these things to be like, this is what this has gotten me because it's not a thing. Yeah. It's just fake numbers because people don't want to pay for it. And I exactly. feel awful saying this, but it's, it's, it's very much like an LA thing that everyone's just like, Oh, like you'll get followers, you'll get this, I'll post about it. And then sometimes they don't even like credit you in the post. I was they like, do what it was in the, the comment and you're like, change it. I was like, what was the point of that? Yeah. So there's so much frustration there and it's just interesting because it's like, you know, everyone wants to make a living on this. So it's oh, yeah. like, if you're trying to make a living being a creative, pay your creatives that you you're working to. with. Yeah. You have to because we're giving you the content as well. Yeah. And I feel like, especially if you shoot like a model or if you shoot, um, I mean, these people that want to be like, shoot me for exposure, it's kind of like, you're probably getting a hell of a lot more out of it than I am. Yeah. Like, you're getting content and you're like, people are flocking like to you because like, you know, we just you shot and you look amazing yeah. and you have all these, you know, but it's like, they're not like flocking to us, like shoot me. And if they are, it's like, they don't want to pay you either. And there's like this, this like funny like video that I saw on this person is like, yeah, like I'll pay you with exposure. And it's like, oh, well like why I need money. And it's like, but like, yeah, and then you'll get like more people who don't want to pay you. It's like, I'm getting so much unpaid work. I have to turn people away. So where's like, where's the benefit? Like, you know, yeah. like, why should I say yes? Besides I get content, but like at what cost for yeah. me to drive out and like stress out about my time. and. Yeah, it's just not worth it. Even like my good friends that I shoot constantly, and it's not like me going out of my way to shoot right. them, oh, totally. they will still like be like, hey, I'm really sorry, I only have 50 bucks or something right now. Can I at least give you this and we can work something out later? Yeah. Or I'll take you out to dinner and pay you 50 bucks or buy you a case of beer. Yeah. And there's always like something there that it's like, Okay, these are my friends, so obviously oh, totally. they appreciate my work and they're trying to like help yeah. me and be considerate about it. And I'm like, I don't even work for my friends for free. <laughs> like, yeah, because your real <laughs> friends want to pay you. Exactly. And that's a really good point. Like, I think when it's voluntary, like, it's a different story. If I'm willing to be like, yeah, like, you know what, just, just give me a hundred bucks, like, don't worry about it. Or like, you know, if it's a friend or, yeah, I'll totally help you out. That's different. But yeah. like, don't come to me as a client and be exactly. like, I have zero dollars for you. Like, that's different. But I think like totally, like, even like my real friends will always be like, let me give you a little bit. Or like, can I buy you dinner? Or, can I give you gas money and buy you dinner and give you some money? Yeah. It's like, you know, like there, I think there are people that like, get it and like I really it. Yeah. value that and I'm way more likely to be like yeah I'll take 50 bucks of course like yeah. you know but I totally get that. We talked a little bit about the industry but one thing that comes up that I hear often is that concert photography by itself is male dominated. Do you hear that a lot and like do you agree with it? Do you think that there's more men in this industry or like what do you think is going on there? I think e I agree right like when you said it I was like oh yeah like when I think of the when I think of the artists that I'm watching that have their content created by photographers it's it is a lot of men like those yeah. bigger ones like I mentioned wanting to work with Lord so bad and I like mm -hmm. recently just like deeply stalked her Instagram because I was like if he's making her content and like it is a guy and like but it the work is amazing like yeah. I'm not like like judging it um but a lot of artists even like Halsey and there's another guy that I've been following and he, they make like insane content so when I look at these big artists and who's following them I do see a lot of men yeah. I think the shows that I go to that I shoot are a little bit smaller I have seen a growth of more women which is really really cool um, but it's something that you notice where it's like oh there are more girls here yeah. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean like you totally notice like oh I'm not the only girl this time so um, I would say from from what I've seen and what I've like kind of looked for that I, I do see a lot of dudes but yeah, I do, there are a couple females though that I like keep my eye on that I see working with a lot of artists and I definitely admire them. Um, but I think like 
initially, yeah, my first thought is like, yeah, definitely a lot of guys doing it. Yeah. It's so interesting too because sometimes like, I, I do the same like internet stalking and like oh, yeah. sometimes their work is incredible and I'm like, they deserve that job. Like that's way more than I could ever right. do or someone at my level. So like that kind of stuff I totally get. And then there are sometimes that it happens that like for example, I was at a show a few weeks ago and I think there were seven or eight women in the pit and one male. And that one male was the house photographer. Of course he was. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, like he must have good work. And I gave right. him the benefit of the doubt there. I was like, obviously he's the house photographer or whatever. And I looked into it and I was like, okay, I don't think his work's very good. But I didn't yeah. say anything. And then I asked a few of my friends. I was like, do you guys think that this guy's work is good? And they were like, no. Like, absolutely not even in comparison to like the other women that were there like women out of my experience level like really really talented wow. and i was like why aren't they in that position and it seems yeah. so odd to me that like it comes up time and time again that men get these positions whether it's like the house photography spot or the touring spot and i don't the know touring. why <laughs> yeah so I think like in in life and in anything creative, there's so much of it is like it's who you know, oh, really, totally. you know. So I think like, and it's a lesson for everyone is like, sometimes like stuff just happens for you, and sometimes it just doesn't. So maybe like even if this person's work is bad, like maybe they just know somebody. So, yeah. But like, and that's like, and that's another thing with this industry where it's like, God, like you can be, and that's what. Again, anything creative, um, mm -hmm. like modeling, acting is a big one, and like photography, it's all who you know, like who's gonna get your yeah. foot in the door, and it's crazy, like I was telling someone recently, like all the work that I've gotten, like genuinely, all like the good work that like I really value, that I love, has all been word of mouth, like yeah. I've never had anyone come to me like, I came across your Instagram, or I came like, across your website, like. I want to work with you. It's always been like, hey, like I know someone that like needs a photographer. Like, oh, like yeah. my friend is like, it's all been word of mouth, and I think that's like what it comes down to. But like, I'm also very fascinated in like the agent side of it. I know that there are photographers that have like agents that find them work, not concert photographers that I know of. Uh, okay. But there are creative agencies that represent photographers, and I'm okay, kind of yeah, curious about that. Like, hmm, maybe. That just be such a good way to like make yeah. content and like connections and get paid. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's like there's a different side involved. So I think a lot of it is it's just who you know. Yeah. And, like even if you aren't that good, it's kind of like I don't know, yeah. that's what sucks. That's one thing that I always have to remember is like when I'm out, like I need to be networking with people. I need to be right. talking. I need to make sure that people know that I'm there and like what I'm doing there and I yeah. like to just like get a beer from the bar and like sit in my own little corner of the pit and just like wait it out. Oh, like I just cool. like do my job and kind of leave but I always have to remember like this industry is very much like who you know. Yeah. So it's like good tip for everyone out there but I really struggle with it. It's really hard. Yeah it, it can be hard especially I see that a lot like everybody really like kind of sticks to themselves like minds their own business in the pit and I definitely try to make an effort to like talk to people or be like who are you shooting for or, like yeah like do you know this artist some people don't they're like I've never heard of them <laughs> and, like so if it's an artist I like I'm like really and like well, you can like try to make yeah. friends but um especially if it's like a festival I've shot a couple like three-day festivals and it's like oh you're there every single day yeah. it's like the same person and like you're tired so it's yeah. kind of like it's it's cool and it's like that but it does help to network the last few things I wanted to talk about is more getting into women in the industry and like your experiences and just like tips and things that you've seen or just like want to yeah. talk about because the one thing that I'm trying to do with this whole interview series is just promote other women and right. their work because like we've said we don't see women in all these like bigger positions. Industry. So 
just trying to like build a platform where we can start pushing women and being like, hey, this is awesome, this is a thing that you can do, and get women in those positions. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to chat quickly about like, I think we've mentioned this a little bit, but any more insight on like why we don't see women in those like upper positions in the industry, or um, like why you don't think that there's a lot of women in those roles? Yeah, I think I was thinking about this um, recently actually. I feel like, again, it is like who you know and kind of like the people that get in those positions maybe have some type of connection or some have wiggled their way in there. But um, I also know that the people that are making insane content, like the content is insane. Like there are drones, like, uh, you know what I mean? Like it's crazy, the stuff that's being put out to the point where like it almost, I look at that and I'm like, is that what I have to do to tour with this, like literally go, go and be like a touring photographer for a band? Like do I need to fly a drone inside of a venue? Like, you know what I mean? I don't know if you've seen it, It's it looks cool. Like I wish I could do it, but... <laughs> I would like smack someone in the head with that drone. I don't know how I, I do it. I want to like talk to someone that does it and be like, show me. And like, I just... <laughs> like the talk about like stress and like the pressure of flying a drone inside oh, totally. of a venue during a show like it's crazy so <laughs> but I see stuff like that and it makes me feel like I need to step it up for sure just as a creative in general to succeed and um, I mean I don't know if it's a matter of like people being overlooked because they don't do those things or just um, a lack in its entirety and I think social media again is like another good point where it's like I know that there are a lot of like female photographers out there in mm -hmm. general, but like maybe like I mean me, maybe like we are being overlooked because of like our lack of like, well, who have you worked with? Or like what's your presence like or like how, you know, yeah. Instagram famous or how whatever are you? Sometimes I feel like maybe like my lack of like content or the lack of like people that I've worked with maybe is what's kind of caused me to not be more like higher up in my like in the industry or not have more not be working with bigger artists sometimes I'm like so no like seeing stuff like that makes me wonder if like oh well and it makes me like self-conscious almost like maybe I'm just like not good enough or maybe oh, yeah. I just need to like I don't know like be better but um I definitely feel like there there is a lack based off of what I do see, kind of, and, and who I see shooting what. I'm like, where are they? I know that they're out yeah. there, but... Um, it's interesting because I've heard a lot of people say, like, women need to put out more content, yeah. that's the thing. And I don't know if that's necessarily true. It's just maybe, like, what you were saying is, like, that quote-unquote, like, viral content and, like, the crazy the stuff crazy is, stuff. like, all done by men, so it's, like, maybe all of the women need to get together and be, like, <laughs> let's fly drones. <laughs> like, how do we do something crazy? Because, yeah. like, I see a ton of good content by women, and, but now I'm getting to the point that I don't know if I'm actively seeking it out. Like, I want to see more women on my feed. I want to talk to them yeah. and all of that. So, like, I see it all the time. And I'm like, no, there's plenty of women in this industry. It's not male-dominated. Yeah. But I'm also welcoming it. Yeah, and, and I don't. I think that's where we're opposite. It's like, I don't. So, like, it's because I'm thinking of, like, what photographers do I follow? And, like, I don't. I follow more of just the artists. I just okay, follow, yeah. like, I'm following all the artists, and that's where I'm seeing, like... Oh, that makes a lot of sense. So, yeah, that's where I'm seeing it. I'm not really looking at it from, like, an Instagram, or, like, the, like, looking as a photographer, like, where can I find more female content? And I think that's... Maybe if I looked for it, I'd find more. But just, like, following artists and following, like, creative blogs, a lot of stuff is just shot by guys. Yeah. This is a more personal question, but have you had issues in the industry because you're a woman? Like, we mentioned before that, like, you've had people tell you, like, I'm really important, I'm shooting for the venue. Right. Is it, like, that kind of thing? Do you get that often, or is it just, like, 
kind of yeah more. it's usually it's usually that and then I think um, I don't know maybe people thinking that you're a little more sensitive like kind of tiptoeing maybe in the way that they talk to me um, a lot of like calling me sweetie and like oh, yeah. all that you know it's just like it's fine like some people that's just how they talk and stuff but yeah. um, it does make me wonder like are you being this hard on me because like I not okay I, I don't want to word it as, as like you're talking to me like this because I'm a woman but more of like if I was a dude your age would you talk to me the same way is yeah. my that's kind of where it gets like me more because I don't I don't know I like looking at things from that lens of, yeah. of not like it's because I'm a woman but more of just like what if what if we were the same yeah, you know, and I think that's where it's a little bit different. Like, I shot someone this time last year, and they like didn't pay me for I think six months, and it was a lot of money. And it, I kept wondering, wow. like, why is this? Is this because like I'm like a young, like a young yeah. girl, and you're like, sorry, sorry, babe, sorry, hon. Like, I'm gonna get the money to you, and I'm like, dude, like, are you serious? Like, but if yeah. I was like a, if I was like a man, like a man your age, like in your industry, like. Would you take six months and like make up excuses as to why you can't pay me? Like you know what I mean? So stuff like that that I think makes me wonder. Like, is it because like you don't respect me as much? You don't take me as seriously? Um, but that's something to be said about me as well. Like I, you can't let people do that to you. You know. And I was very like, oh no, like it's so yeah, no worries. Like because I'm like this is a good contact. I don't want to lose yeah. them. But um, it's kind of. Yeah, I think it, just the way that maybe I'm talked to makes me wonder if it's because I'm a woman or people just kind of, again, like pushing me aside and being like, hey, sweetie, like, I'm like, you need to move. And it's like, what if I was just as big as you? And what if I was a dude and I had 12 cameras strapped to my body? Like, would yeah. you tell me, hey, sweetie, move over? You know, it's kind of stuff, stuff like that. Yeah. This is like something that I've thought a lot about of like, if I was another guy, or if I was this age, exactly. or what would it be? What What are those lines that like you're still being inconsiderate? Because mm -hmm. I think that like all of the issues that I've talked to other women about in the industry, it's just like a general people being inconsiderate. Yeah. So there's this fine line of like, at what point does it become like sexism and about right. being a woman and like. Are, or are you just disregarding people because of their age and being rude to yeah. them because of that? I or exactly. like maybe their size? Like I've seen tall people in the pit just be <laughs> incredibly rude to shorter people. Why. And it's just like there's, yeah. it's it's not just like a black and white like male right. versus female issue. It's like all these different layers on it, which we've kind of talked about a little bit, could be solved if you were just like. Consider just a it, nicer person. Yeah, yeah, just be like a slightly nicer person. Right. And it's so frustrating because it's like, okay, I try and move out of the way and allow for other people to get the same shot and stuff, but yeah. other people don't do the same. And it's like, dude, what? yeah, you're just like, kind of like, who are you allowing the shot yeah. for? And is it just yourself? Like, yeah, it it's weird, and it's like, I always like find myself thinking in the pit, like. Like you were saying, it's, if I was a guy, or if I was bigger, if I was whatever, would you still yeah. treat me the same? Yeah, yeah, I I agree with that, and I think I, I it does make me wonder. Like when I've I've seen shows, or I, I like go to these. I mean, whether I'm shooting or not, but just like I'm always looking for like who's backstage, like or like who's who's the person with the camera, like behind the drummer, you know? And it's like mm -hmm. part of it does make me wonder if it's like. A lot of them are guys, and I'm like, are, are they just like cooler? Because I I do experience that where like I feel like guys can be like really smooth and just like cool, and it's like it makes me think where it's like, is there just something about like these guys where like even if we can do the same thing that it's like they're easier to work with or like what is the deal? Like I do I need to be more smooth? Do I need to get a haircut? Like what's the deal? Like you know what I mean? Like what is it where it's like I'm just as cool? I'm just at I'm just as cool. Like I don't really know these people, but like I'm like a pretty easy to work with person. Like I'm pretty friendly. I'm like really creative. I'm super easygoing. But like sometimes I do get in my head like um, like do I need to be more like 
out of it. Do I need to have more of like a personality for them to want to work with me? And it makes me like yeah. totally whim. Like I feel like it normally would just be about the content that you can put out and if, if you're like a reasonable person. I mean it does have a lot to do with like your personality but it's just a whole thing. It yeah. just kind of makes me get in my head a lot where it's like what is wrong with me and like why am I not in that position? <laughs> like, I've heard that a lot actually is the bands when they go on tour they want to bring someone that's just like hanging like out with them. Yes, totally. exactly. And when it's guys on tour, you know, they bring their buddy. And like that, I get. Yeah, you But get I that totally so understand much. that. But at the same time, when like these big female artists are on tour and there's like this older guy that's Fall doing like their, the yeah, <laughs> that's doing their like behind the scenes stuff. Like I personally, maybe this just says something about me instead of the other artists, but I personally would be uncomfortable with that. Like I would yeah. like to bring on a female photographer to like be with me and just hang like out friend. with other things. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But yeah. like we're still seeing these big female photographers bring guys on their tours and I'm just like, <sighs> Yeah, it's like, and part of me is also like, we could have so much fun like if I was there. We could be best friends we and could hang out like, all the share time. Clothes <laughs> and like talk about and girl stuff. And I'm just like, we could help each other out. Like it's just like fun stuff. Like I mean, it, and that's partly why. Like when I think of working in the industry and like when I first when I was going to concerts when I was 17 and like being in the front row. Like mm -hmm. I remember feeling like I need to feel like this all the time. Like I want to work in this industry because yeah. I just want that and I want more of a relationship with this artist. And I was never like starstruck. There were a couple yeah. people that I was like obsessed with, but like for the most part it was more of just like a wow, I really respect this person mm -hmm. and like their music and their talent and like I want to know them on like a deeper level rather than like I like your music, you know? So yeah. I think also like wanting to be a photographer and wanting to like create stuff more like intimately is it kind of like ties in with that. Like I just want to like we should just be friends and hang out. Cool. Well thank you so much for having me and chatting and I'm so excited to share more of your work and show everyone what you do and thank you. See you in I'm the so pit excited. again soon. See you in the I'll see you in the pit. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye, see you. <laughs> I'll see you in the